Hey, Jody here. This video is brought to you by my online store at weldmonger.com. Let's do it. This is the second piece of a two-part job that I did a while back, and I'm going to use a different technique on this one. The first part, I did a two-pass weld using a, a sort of a dab and pause technique for the root pass, and then I weaved it over top of that. For this one, I'm going to use a total of three passes and use the lay wire technique. Preheat with 165 amps, no pulse or anything. I'm using a foot pedal, and I'll be maxed out on the foot pedal. 332 ER70S2 wire, and I'm just soaking it in there, just something like this, using some really small motion with the torch, just manipulating that electrode. You could say I'm doing sort of like tiny circles or slight side-to-side -side motion. Either one, either one works fine. But it's fairly slow travel speed, and it's just 4130 material, so I don't want to, you know, go real fast. I don't want the metal to cool off. That's the reason for the preheat. I want to soak a lot of heat into this part. I want it to cool slowly. I'm using a number 12 ceramic ferret cup uh, with 25 CFH gas, and you can see it's doing a darn good job there of shielding. There are two of these lugs, and they each get welded on, on two sides. But I'm going to do three passes. I'm not going to show you all of them because they all look the same pretty much. But I'll, I will do another root pass here. Which if we can get another look at that from a, from a different angle, get a different perspective on it. See, I'm doing little tiny little circles. And I'm leaving the wire in the puddle. That's why they call it lay wire. And with enough amperage and using small enough rod, you can, you can almost be assured of penetration on something like this. You're never quite sure because you don't dab it in and out. So I've done a lot of cut and etch tests on joints like this on similar material. I'm satisfied with this preheat and this amperage. That's getting in there just fine. But I'm going to put two more passes on this thing just to achieve the 250 thousandths leg size that's called for on the blueprint. And I'm going to use the same technique. Same technique. Lay wire. And I'm just going to manipulate the torch just slightly like this. It just kind of, for me, it's not even necessary to do this, but for me, it kind of helps me just see where I'm going. It kind of moves the light around a little bit, and I'm trying to keep an eye on, like, the top toe of that previous weld so I can kind of line up and get somewhat of a straight bead here. You want to taper off nice and slowly on, on thick 4130 like this. You don't want to leave any kind of crater dot, any kind of eye, fish eye, crater eye that might turn into a crack later, and I trail back inboard as I taper off to prevent leaving any kind of a crater eye. One more pass stacked right in there and I'm not even going to let it cool a whole lot. Once I got this thing heated up, I started by putting it in an oven at 500 degrees and I left it in there about an hour and then I even had to hit it with a torch to start with to bring it back up to temp before I welded on it and I don't want to let it cool so I'm, I'm not really letting it cool much. I'm, I'm uh, getting right back on these welds. Um, sw switching around. I'm running a pass on each lug here, but I'm keeping the heat in the part. And I'm using an IR thermometer gun to kind of verify that I'm not letting it cool too much. So I'm maintaining my preheat. Even with the preheat, though, that cup is keeping it pretty much silver toward the end there. All right, I'm going to speed this run up because everything looks the same from here on out. You can see I've got a piece of weld wire bent over that thing because it's, this thing is really warm to pick up and I'm having to reposition it in the little little uh, drill vise that I'm using to hold it on the table there. But Cup did a great job. I can extend that electrode out an inch if I need to and it really helps for filming but it also helps for getting in tight spots. Here's a little quick shot of the previous uh, video that I did where I just used the same lay wire technique but I did a little narrow weave over top of the first pass to achieve the required leg size. And in a second here, I'll show you that the taper off here that I use. I weld all the way to the end, put a little bit of extra rod in, and then slowly taper as I pull it back inboard. And that works for me as far as not leaving any kind of little crater eye that might turn into a crack. So if you want to learn more about this ceramic 12 cup, you can go to weldmonger.com. If you like what you saw here, hit that subscribe button. I've also got a little, a little bundle for a savings if you're interested in the cup as well as a TIG finger. 
And if you're struggling in getting better at TIG welding or trying to learn how to TIG weld and you're struggling, I think this can help. I've got some of the best of my TIG welding YouTube videos on a four disc set and you get a free TIG finger with that. Thanks for watching. See you next time.